and 35. When my soul is singing in that promised land above, I'll be satisfied. Praising Christ the Savior for redeeming grace and love, I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. I'll be satisfied. When my soul is resting in the presence of the Lord, I'll be satisfied. Living in a sea where the soul shall never die, I'll be satisfied. There to be with loved ones, never more to say goodbye.
And were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught them and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch 
out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in their other ships, on the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. And when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Amen. Brother Tim, you want to pray tonight? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. This passage of scripture, a man could preach several different ways. And and I have before under the anointing of the Lord, not in myself. But I, as I look into the scripture at verse 3, and he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. It wasn't by chance that the Lord chose Simon, which was Peter. It wasn't by chance. God knew what he was doing. God knew specifically which boat it was, which ship. Amen. That he should get in. He didn't have to walk down there and, and say, hey, which one is Simon's? He knew. And as much as he cares and knows whose ship it was, he cares that much more for us, his creation. We are fearfully and we are wonderfully made in the image of God. And God created us. The Bible said for such a time as this. And oft times I say, Lord, why did you create me for now? Why did you create me for, for such a time as it is now? A, a time that we have never seen before in this land. A time that we have never seen, amen, of, of, the, of the laws and the, and the things that are contrary to the Word of God. And we know that the spirit of Antichrist, amen, was working even when the, when the New Testament was written. We know all that. We understand that and we see that. But for now, for such a time as this. But the Lord saw that it was Simon's boat and he had a particular reason for going into Simon the fisherman's boat. And after he got done speaking, if, if you go back and you study, I don't know if you've ever been out on the water, but your voice carries a little bit farther when you're out on the water. We was fishing a couple weeks ago and uh, we fished under the bridge down there and I said, man, there's some good acoustics in here. I just started singing. And I'm not the best singer, but I like to make a joyful noise for the Lord. But uh, I began to think about it as Jesus, when he told uh, Simon, I, if I say Peter, don't fall out with me. It's the same one. I know Luke calls him Simon here. But as, as, they, as Jesus told Simon, he said, go out just a little ways. And he began to talk to the people and he began to teach them and he began to expound their knowledge and, and, and pour into them. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want the Lord to pour into me. Amen. Yes. Amen. The world's trying its best to pour into us, but I, I want the Lord to pour his knowledge and his wisdom and his understanding in me. Because I'm flesh. I'm of a sinful man. 
Hey man, I'm of a sinful nature, but you know what? The blood has been applied to my life. Amen. And I'm, I don't willfully sin by the help of God. Amen. I choose to serve the Lord. And I, I choose. To, amen. Jesus told us, he said, choose this day whom you shall serve. I choose to serve the Lord. The Lord did not push this on me. Amen. He did not push salvation upon me, but he stood and he knocked. Yeah. And he knocked upon the door. And I was the one that opened up and let the Lord in. Amen. But what it... Amen, what we've heard preached, Jimmy's preached it so wonderful many times, what we lost in Adam, we gained in Christ. Thanks be to God for that. But amen, I need the Lord to pour into me because it comes natural of this fleshly, this fleshly nature is natural to sin. We're born into sin. It's natural for this flesh to sin. That's why the Bible speaks of, Paul wrote many times, he said the spirit and the flesh, they are contrary one to another. They war one with another. They're in a tug of war. Amen. He said it's a constant battle. Paul said I crucify my flesh daily and take up my cross and follow the Lord. I, I, off times, church, we have to find ourselves crucifying our flesh. Amen. If we're not crucifying our flesh, the flesh is running wild. The flesh, the flesh is running rampant in our land. And when I say our land, I'm talking about our life. Amen. Amen. But you see here Jesus when he entered in and he began to teach to them and he, he told him he, uh, uh, he told him to, uh, to launch out, just to thrust out just a little deeper, uh, just a little from the land. And he told them. Now in verse 4, when he got done speaking to them, he told Simon, he said, launch out into deep and let down your nets for a drought. Amen. What I'd like to, the thought the Lord gave me, I'd like to share with you tonight, simply obey God. Amen. Simply obey the Lord. What he says, take him at his word. Don't question it, because I have. Huh? Huh? Don't question it. I have. Maybe you ain't, but I have before. I, I've said, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> hey, man, Lord, I don't know about this. I've questioned it. Huh? Just simply Take what the Lord says. Amen. He told him, he said, launch out. He told Simon, he said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Amen. I don't know, have you ever stayed up all night? <laughs> huh? Whether by choice or maybe that's, your, that's your, the shift that you work. Some people work night shift. Amen. Night shift's not for me. Amen. Night shift's for my wife. She's a night owl. And uh, boy, she's hard to get up in the morning. Amen. But I'm ready. When the alarm comes on, I'm ready to get up. Amen. I know it's time to get up. And uh, she's rubbed off on me since I've been out of work and unable to. I've been staying up a little bit later. So I have been sleeping a little longer of the morning. Amen. But these men had toiled all night. And I don't know about you, but I have sat and fished all night long. And not have nothing to show for it. Amen. And Simon told him, he said, we, Master, we've, we've toiled all night and we've caught nothing. How many times do we question the Lord? Huh? When the Lord simply says, do something that we want to put our two cents in. Maybe I'm just preaching to me tonight and that'll be all right too. Amen. Just simply do what the Lord says. Amen. If the Lord says go, simply go. Amen. Huh? If he says stop, simply stop. Oh, now preacher, that's, that's elementary. That ought to, Church, how many times have we found ourselves partially obeying God, which is totally disobeying him? Amen. I remember one time I had a, I had a friend of mine tell me, he said, Lord moved on me to fast for seven days. I said, brother, I'll be praying for you. Three days in, he called me. I said, are you eating? I heard him chomping. He said, yeah. He said, I decided just to fast pop and coffee. I said, you might as well just go ahead and drink your pop and coffee because you didn't know what the Lord said to do. Amen. Huh? The Lord said for you to fast seven days, and he moved upon you to do it. I said, and you're not doing what thus saith the word of the Lord. Huh? Yeah. Simon here, he simply said, Lord, we've toiled all night. We've been out there all night long and we ain't caught a thing. We have fished all night. Huh? 
But Peter, or Simon Peter here being, hey man, a follower of Christ, he said, nevertheless, huh? Nevertheless, at thy word, amen. Nevertheless, and Simon answered, said unto him, verse five, Master, we have told all the night and have taken nothing, but ne uh, nevertheless, no but, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Amen. Huh? Yeah. I take it. Now, the way I read this scripture, I take it that it was just the Lord and Simon on this, on this ship at this present moment. That's the way I take it. Now, I might be wrong when I'm not saying the Bible says, but that's, that's the way that I read it. It was just Simon Peter and the Lord. Because he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Yeah. Amen. He didn't say we. He said I. He said I will let down the net. That lets me to believe that, that uh, James and John were in the other boat, the other ship. And they was not on this one. But he did what the Lord said. In spite of being tired, in, in spite of being physically exhausted, and the fruit of his labor showing nothing. How would you like to go to work and then the boss man say, I can't pay you this week? Well, you wouldn't want to have a, you wouldn't have a lot of enthusiasm to want to go back the next shift now, would you? Huh? Think about that. All night long, they sit out there and they fished. And it wasn't with poles. It, it wasn't with uh, hooks and, and sinkers and different. It was nets. They took nets and they would, they would draw their fish in. But, but Simon Peter simply did what the Lord said. And he said, nevertheless, in spite of that we've told all night and we have nothing to show and I'm very tired and, and I'm, I'm probably smelling like the water, smelling like the fish, and I would rather go home and rest a little while, in spite of, nevertheless, I will let down the net. Huh? Simply obeying the voice of God. Amen. Amen. So many times. Even though Simon here, he started to question the Lord. Lord, we've toiled all night and have taken nothing. But all of a sudden, he realized, I do believe he was, he realized who he was talking to. And it was Jesus. It was the Messiah. Huh? It was the one, amen, that was there when the fishes were created. Come on, somebody. It was the one. He said, but nevertheless, Lord, I'm tired. I have nothing to show. I'm ready to just go home and rest. But nevertheless, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of, 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 of the fruit of my labor showing nothing, I will let down the net. Yeah, Amen. Simply just obeying the voice of God. Amen. Simply just coming, amen, to the, to the agreement to let God be God in our lives. I want, to, I want to read some scripture to you out of John 17, a prayer that Jesus was praying here. And listen what he said. And I'm not saying tonight nothing about us not coming together in unity, but I want you to listen to the words of this prayer. This is all the words of Jesus. John 17 and 19, if you want to turn there. John 17 and 19. The Bible said, just Jesus speaking, he said, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Yeah. Verse number 20 in John 17. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Amen. Huh? And that, the, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and thou hast loved me. Amen. When we simply do what thus saith the word of the Lord and take him at his word, 
we are one with the Lord. Huh? We are one with Jesus as Jesus was one with the Father. Because we can trust him. Amen. And we can take him at his word. And when he says do something, we don't question it. We don't have to say nevertheless. We just say, okay, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. Because you see, my friend, I'm telling you tonight, many times have I been the one to say, Lord, I don't know. Huh? I'm tired, Lord. Amen. I just don't feel like it. Lord, you know, you know how my body feels. Huh? How many times? But then we'll, we'll, we'll get that little old sad attitude, or maybe it's just me. Nevertheless, Lord, I'll go and do it. Amen. In spite of God, I'll get ready and go. Huh? Yes. We're not one with the Father. We're not one with Jesus. And Jesus prayed for us. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for us. He said, not only them, but those to come that will believe in word that I am he that thou hast sent. Amen, Amen somebody. Jesus wants us to take him at his word. Amen. Preacher, what is his word? It's the Bible. Yes. It's the Bible. Simply take him at his word. And he said, what he said will come, will come. When, I don't know. But only, only the Father knows. Amen. Only the Father knows. If anybody says, well, I believe he's coming here and I believe he, Listen, it's all right to speculate this, that, and the other. I, I'm surprised that he ain't done come to see the shape this world's in. But you know what? When I say that, I'm reminded of this. I'm reminded of the mercy and the grace of God. That he's long-suffering toward usward. Amen. Because somebody's family member is still hanging in the balance. Amen. Somebody's family member is still lost in sin and the wrath of God has not been poured out. Amen. Upon this earth yet. Amen. Because he's mercy, merciful and long-suffering toward usward. Amen. Amen. And we ought to be that way also with others. Yeah. Merciful and long-suffering. Yeah. And you know what? There's times that I've not done that. Huh? I've snapped. Come on. Be honest, church. Amen. You know it's the truth. Huh? Yeah. We've not been long-suffering. We, we've, not, we've not done what simply the Word of God said do. And he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. How many names the mercy of God? Amen. I do. Yeah. I need His mercy every day. And thank God the Bible said it's new every morning. I had, a, I had a person ask me, he said, well, w when do you think that is? I said, why are you trying to use all of, all of yesterday's mercy before it runs out? <laughs> he didn't know what to say then. I said, I just thank God it's new every morning. Yeah. Amen? A according according to, to, to the way we tell time, morning starts at 12 a.m. Huh? Amen. I know the Bible, amen, many times they uh, would talk about the third hour of the day. The, the 6 a.m. was the start of their day. Amen. Whether it's midnight or 6 a.m., thank God that His mercy is new. Amen. It's not renewed, but it's new like it never was. It's brand new. Huh? Thank God for that. Because had it not been, honey, I, I would have been doomed. I couldn't stand up here and preach to you tonight. Because there's times that I have failed. There's times that, hey man, that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And no, I've not done some big great elaborate sin as what man would call it. But simply disobeying the voice of God and not doing what he says to do is sin. It's the same as murder. It's the same as bank robbery. It's the same, amen, as, as adultery and fornication. It's the same thing. I just simply got to take him at his word. Amen. And he's prayed for us. And like I said the other, maybe it was Sunday night or Sunday morning. I can't remember now. When he created us, he put the faith in us that we need to serve him. Yeah. And I'm not standing up in here and acting like I've got everything together and I never make mistakes because I do. I do. I make mistakes. I'm human. I'm human. I do. I make mistakes. I don't do them intentionally by the help of God. I don't. I don't. Now listen, this is the way the world is. Well, I'm going to go do this. I know it's wrong, but the Lord has to forgive me. No, He don't. No, He don't. Huh? The Lord don't have to do anything. But you see, that's the way the world has, has grabbed hold of, uh, of Christianity. Well, God will forgive me no matter what. Well, let me tell you what 
Paul said in his writings there in the book of Hebrews. He said, if we sin willfully after that, we have attained the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for the remission of sin. What's that let me know tonight? There's no more blood, of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ applied to my life if I continue to willfully sin. Huh? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What did he say? God forbid. Come on, church. Amen. Simply obeying the voice of God and doing what thus saith the word of the Lord. It's so easy to make mistakes, and I've made them. I'm not always, the Lord's woke me up in the middle of the night. I've told you this before. And say it's needful to pray. Get down and pray. Huh? And I just pull the covers back up and start praying. And next thing I know, the alarm clock's going off. Amen. And I fell asleep in the middle of prayer. And I've not done what the word of the Lord had told me to do. Huh? So I've disobeyed God. Amen. Huh? When the Lord tells me that, I, I need to say, yes, Lord. Huh? Lord, you know I'm tired. You know my body's hurting. You know I'm not feeling good. But nevertheless, Lord, I need to throw them covers back. In spite of all the circumstances, in spite of everything that's going on, in spite of everything that's happening, Lord, I need you. I need you. Yeah. Jesus knew what was coming in the flesh there in the garden. Huh? He knew what was coming. He knew that his flesh was getting ready to endure some heartache. And he prayed that the cup would pass from him. But he said, nevertheless, thanks be to God. Because if the Lord hadn't, if God had answered the Lord's prayer right then, amen, we would still probably be offering up animals. And we'd still have to be confessing to a high priest. But aren't you glad that in spite of the flesh, in spite of the pain and the agony that, that the Lord was getting ready to come under subjection to, he said, nevertheless, Father, in spite of everything that's getting ready to happen, in spite of the cat of nine tails, in spite of the, in spite of the spear, in spite of the crown of the thorns, in spite of the, of, the, of, the, of the nails and the hammer, in spite of being hung on a cross, not my will, but thy will be done, God. Hallelujah. Simply obeying the voice of God. Church, sometimes it's hard on the flesh. Sometimes the flesh don't want to do it. But Paul said, I keep my body and I bring it under subjection. Hallelujah. I'm feeling this tonight, church. And I make it do what the flesh don't want to do. I make it read. I make it pray. I make it talk to God. My flesh don't want to do it because the Bible says in my flesh lies no good thing. Hey Amen. You can't serve God in the flesh. You cannot serve God in the flesh. You can't please the Lord in the flesh. You've got to get into the Spirit. Huh? You've got to get to the place, hey Amen, where you can worship God. Hey Amen. Jesus told the woman at the well, and the, He said, And the Father seeketh such that'll worship Him. Huh? We have grace and mercy. We just need to use it lawfully, if I could say it that way. Nevertheless, I'm back in Luke. Nevertheless, Luke, Luke 5 and 5. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Huh? In spite of my pain... In spite of my, my circumstance, in spite of my physical elements, in spite of how tired that I am, I'm going to do it, Lord. I'm going to do it. My friend, let me tell you this. When you simply obey God and you do what He says, God will bless you. Huh? God will bless you. You hear me, church? Listen to me. God will bless you. Ain't that, amen? Ain't that awesome? Can you say amen? Amen. God will bless you when you simply do what thus saith the word of the Lord and you do what he says do. God will bless you. Sorry, Mitch, I'm feeling good. <laughs> God will bless you. When you draw that net in, honey, there'll be so many fish in it that it'll start to break. Huh? And not only will God bless you when you obey him, he'll bless those that's around you as well. Come on, neighbor. Huh? 
Nevertheless, Lord, at thy word, I will let down the net. Huh? And when, they had, and when they had done this, I know it says they, I, think, I still think it was Jesus and Simon. They enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship. Notice why I think it was just Simon and Jesus. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. What was the significant of the fishes? Huh? What was the significant about a, a great swell of fishes? It's how they made their living. It's how they fed their families. Amen. Huh? It's how they provided. Amen. Oh, Simon, he said, Lord, nevertheless, in spite of everything that's happened, I didn't catch nothing last night. Nothing went our way. Every bait we tried, every net we throw, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Huh? Everything we did, we have no fruit for our labor. Come on. Church, I tell you that to say this. When you keep on keeping on and you don't see the Lord moving, by faith you keep on keeping on. Huh? You, you keep toiling. Amen. You keep toiling all the night long. And when the Lord finally comes by and he says, listen, I know you've been doing it this way, but I still want you to let down the net. You're going to catch some fish. You need to say, Lord, nevertheless, in spite of everything else that's going on, I'm going to simply obey your voice. And when we obey his voice, God will bless us. Amen. Amen. Listen, I like getting blessed, don't you? But I love seeing my, my church family. Amen. I, got, I almost said friends, but ch- church, you're more than friends. You're family. We're the family of God. I love seeing people get blessed. Jimmy was preaching the other night, and Lord, they were shouting into preaching. Honey, that, that, that blesses me. Come on, somebody. Huh? I've allowed my body to get into the shape that it's in. I'd love to be able to shout again. Amen. But that's between me and the Lord. I love to, listen, I'm not saying you've got to be physically fit to shout. When the power of God gets on you, amen, listen, it's probably me, oh, me of little faith. I'm afraid that I might, amen, throw something or break something or, or sprain something. But I love to see people being blessed. Amen. amen. I love to see my, my church family, amen, rejoicing and being exceedingly glad. Why? Because the word of God is true when man lets you down and when man forsakes you and when man, amen, does things that's not pleasing in your sight, you can simply turn to the word of God and you can draw from the word of God knowing that the word will never lie to you and the word will set you free. Huh? Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad of the truth of God's word? Simply obeying the voice of God. Simply doing what thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Listen, Matthew 6, 33. The Bible said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Huh? You've got to simply do what the word says. When we do what the word says, honey, we'll be blessed. We'll be encouraged. We'll be uplifted. Just simply obeying the voice of God and doing what thus saith the word of the Lord. Obeying God. And when it go, when you let go and you let God have his way in your life, you'll become blessed and those that are around you will be blessed. Huh? Why? Why is it happening that way, preacher? It's because you're obeying God. You're not pleasing the sight of man. You're not pleasing them. And doing what they want. You're doing what thus saith the word of the Lord. Amen. And when you do what thus saith the word of the Lord. Blessings is going to come your way. Amen. Huh? Thank and when it comes. It'll rub off on your friends. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Your co-workers. Come on. Amen. Peter and James and John. They was in this together. They were fishermen betrayed together. Amen. When one of them got blessed. The co-workers got blessed. Amen. Come on somebody. Huh? I can just see old Peter now. Hey, Peter. Or, hey, James. Hey, John. Bring your boat over here. Bring your boat. Yes. Oh, I've got a draw to fish. Thank you, Lord. Huh? Thank you. I don't know if it's fish or fish is. I don't remember. I didn't pay attention in school. I've got a bunch of them anyhow. Huh? I've got a net full. My nets are breaking. There's so, there's so many fish. My nets are breaking. Amen. Church, let me tell you. When you get in the will of God, not only will you be blessed, you'll bless those around you. Huh? Because you want to know why? 
goodness and mercy goes before you. Huh? Before you enter the room, goodness and mercy is already there. Come on, somebody. Huh? Mercy and grace and long-suffering and gentleness. You're just, you're just encamped with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Love and joy and peace and long-suffering. And gentleness and goodness and meekness and faith and temperance. The Bible said against such there is no law. Huh? Simply obey the voice of God. Do what He says do. Amen. Huh? Now, preacher, you don't know what I've been going through. Honey, listen. You don't know how tired Peter was right then neither, now do you? Huh? I go to fish. I don't fish for a living. I go to fish for fun. Amen? I don't depend. <laughs> Terry, my father-in-law, he says this all the time. He said, seems like it'd be a lot more easier just to go to Long John's and order some fish. I said, yeah, but it ain't as fun. It ain't as fun. Huh? I sit out there all night long and I fish at times. And let me just go ahead and throw this in there. There's time, been times in my life that I let it keep me from church. And things begin to happen. Amen. One time the boat caught on fire, didn't it? Huh? One time the boat caught on fire. Why? Because we should have been at church and we was out there on the lake. Amen. Huh? You better put God first, church. Amen. Not only is there blessings, but there's cursings from God. Huh? Oh, now, preacher, I don't believe he curses. I don't believe he curses. No, we curse ourselves. We let bad things happen to us. Because we're not simply obeying the voice of the Lord. He said, I will that you be in health and what? Prosper. That's what the Lord said. Huh? I would that you be in health and prosper. Ah, oh, that's Old Testament. He's still the word made flesh and come and dwell among men. Is it not the voice of the Lord? Huh? Simply obeying God. Simply obeying God. Nevertheless, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. When it ain't easy on the flesh. Huh? When you know, hey man, that it feels so much better to be laying there in them covers. I fell asleep in the recliner last night. Boy, it felt good when I fell asleep, but I woke up about 3.30 this morning. I was kind of stiff because I was in one position all night long. Huh? Yes. Thank you, Lord. It may feel good at first if you continue to sin and not do what simply the Word says do. Honey, you're going to bring condemnation and a reproach upon you. And just as when you get blessed and others around you get blessed, when you begin to bring reproaches upon you, people around you can be, become part of those reproaches. Amen? Yes, I've tried my best this evening. I hope it's been a blessing to you. Don't know how long I've been. Amen? Might have preached 25, 30 minutes. Might have preached 45. I don't care. I shared with you what the Lord laid on my heart. Amen. Simply. Do what the Lord says do. Yes. Simple. It's simple. Why do you think it's so easy that a child can understand it? Because it's that simple. Just what I read to you tonight. Amen. Just do it. Think about growing up. I'd get whoopings for disobedience. And I'd say, Mom, why are you whooping me for? She said, because you disobeyed me. She said, if you'd just done what I told you to do, you wouldn't be getting this whooping. Huh? It's like that with the Lord. If we'll just simply obey Him and trust Him and take Him at His word, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Take Him at His word. She gets us a song tonight. I've tried my best. I hope it's been food for you, food for thought. Amen. Like I said earlier, maybe I was just preaching to myself. It's all right too. I need preaching too, too, don't you? Amen. We need the Word to grow thereby. That's our protein for the spirit man is the Word of God. We need the Word of God. Coming to church don't make you a Christian, but it sure does help. Amen. But what feeds you is the Word of God. Yes. Huh? It's the Word of God. We're not to forsake our, uh, the assembling of ourselves together. The Bible teaches us that. Coming in here and sitting in the pew don't mean you're going to heaven. You have to have a relationship with God for yourself. Amen. And if you've not been born again... You're not going to make heaven. I don't know no other way to put it. I don't care what grandpa or what daddy was or what great grandpa was. You have to have a relationship with God for yourself. Amen. And when you have that relationship, you can do what the Word says do. And you can be blessed. And those around you can be blessed as well. Amen. If you need to pray tonight, this altar is always open.
Let's find us a place to pray if you feel led to do so. We love you. God bless you.
darkness for me.